All right, well that's in place. I can tidy up the corners later. I'm going to get the clamp down in place that holds all this in position. I want the screws that will hold that. And obviously I have to punch some holes through that uh, tape so the screws will pass right through. So I'm putting the two large screws in here at the moment. There are two smaller screws. The smaller screws hold the frame to the viewfinder component itself. These larger screws hold the frame right through it to the body casting. I've got to get those larger screws in position first because it makes it much easier to get the others in afterwards. I think this camera body is from a 3, so it doesn't have a hole in the casting underneath this screw, but I can get the screw started regardless. And the same on the other side. That's good. Now I'll remove the prism, the whole assembly from this body and tighten those two screws up. Oh, it's some bits of tape to block off these little ports. and two longer strips. I've got sticky pieces of tape all over all the tweezers I can find at the moment. That looks good, now I'll just trim the excess off those bits. That's the jingling of the recycling truck going past. That's that. So, I've got to adjust the position of the plastic component with the prism on it relative to the ground glass now. So these little screws will push that plastic piece across. Got to get that centered in the window.
course they're opposing pairs so they both need to be tight That looks pretty good to me. That is ready to go back into the camera body, which I'll go and find. No, I won't, because I'm not going to put the prism back in there just yet. Let's just pop this loosely back in here. And I'll put the piece of tape across the back and the mask on that finder, and then I'll put that viewfinder assembly aside out of harm's way because I'm going to be doing considerably more work to that camera body because I may have it completely apart again yet in order to do the meter swap in fact I'm almost certainly going to have it completely apart again since the meter swap is very very unlikely to work well if I try and get too clever. Well that tape could have come up around right the corner a little bit more but it'll do the job. I'll trim that excess off. This tape I'm using is a, a duct tape. It's um, one with fibres in it, cloth fibres, so it doesn't really stretch. And that's important because plastic adhesive tapes that stretch will also contract and they'll let go and they'll change shape. And they won't be where you left them when you come back at a later date. Alright, that's quite good. I'll put that prism viewfinder assembly very carefully aside now. Ready to put that in the camera body later. First task here is to recover the meter from the donor. So I'll get this all undone. Now the cord we know is broken, we don't know whether the cord is actually present. In other words, we don't know whether someone's been in, made a real hash of it, not only broken the cord, but um, pulled all the evidence of the cord out of the camera. Because anything's a possibility. It's all a mystery under this top cover. What have we got? Let's retrieve our button and spring, our shutter release button, here's our cord, snapped here. I'll just unhook that from the drum. Can't, can't say it's enthusiastic about that. Oh, the cord's broken at the other end too. So no knots on either end of that cord. That's been properly broken. Let's just lift that meter off. Now 
and retrieve the cord. And there's my meter. Now this one was far more lively than its mate, the one on our camera, the one I'm repairing. So this is what I plan to use. So let me clear the decks of the remains of this camera. Let's put that top loosely back on there. This one is very likely to end up in my parts box as exactly as it is. Since I know it would need a new prism and it will need a new meter. over there out of harm's way. Here's our meter and where's our camera? Here. Well I did mention it was possible to change a meter without having to dismantle the whole camera. And I stress that possible doesn't mean practical and it doesn't mean that your chances of success are very good. But I might be able to explain how you'd go about it. Now when I was fitting the meter you may recall I put a couple of washers here and a screw to clamp this cord in place while I was busy rooting it around the, the bottom of the cape, uh, drums to just to stop it falling off. Well what you can do is you can do exactly the same thing here. You can clamp that cord in place and then you lift the meter out, unspool it from the drum at the top Put the new meter in, wrap that cord carefully around the right way around the drum and then remove your two screws and it should all work. In practice my chances of success are very very small. I don't really see much likelihood of that succeeding. What, the, the reason I say that is that I would have to apply quite a bit of force to that cord in order to get enough given it in order to work. I'll see if there's any, any play here, see if, how much slack we've got in that cord, if any. Yeah, I'm lifting this meter and it's not moving that cord much at all, which tells me that the pulley down here, the sprung-loaded one, it is probably up near the top of its movement that the cord is quite tight there. Alright, I don't think there's anything else for it except removing the front of the camera and going right in. So that's what I'll do. I judged that that cord was good enough to reuse again because the original cords are very strong. Um, if they show no sign of any fraying, they'll probably be good to use again. I'll probably push my luck as far as I'm going to get push it on that one. We'll take these components off. The only uh, good thing here is that it everything's clean, everything works, everything should just go back where it came from. There shouldn't be any fights or arguments. It should be fairly straightforward as far as reassembly goes. The last camera I had to do had to swap a meter on. It, uh, 
it wasn't actually a meter swap, I was putting the same meter back, but I'd had to do some work on the top of the film advance after the camera was otherwise fully assembled with the leatherettes on and everything. And so I was able to achieve this method of lifting the meter. There's our shutter assembly. I'll reclaim all the washers, which in this case was, was eight, was it? Eight. It's either eight or twelve on one of these cameras. Of course our drum isn't tension, we haven't got the bracket on there. Yeah, this this cord, that pulley was pulled right up. In other words, this cord was no longer than it needed to be. If there was a lot of slack here, I would have had room to move this meter up and uh, disconnect things. But unfortunately it wasn't to be. So the two meters side by side, what's the deflections like? Yeah, well you can just about see it. Of course this is hardly scientific, they're probably not pointing in the right direction. But there's less deflection on the meter I've just taken out of this camera than there is on the one that I'm going to use as a donor. And that's a fairly subtle thing, but it's sufficient that it's makes the difference of probably a stop of deflection on the meter. So this one's just a bit tired. This one is just a little bit brighter. And so that's the one we're going to use. Just set that to ISA 10 so it's all ready to go back. And I've got to go and find the, or cut or make a new meter cord in order to go in there. So I'll deal with that. Right, I've got my meter coupling cord here. 464 millimeters. In my manual here it says 18 and a quarter inches. Now the cord I've got here was a fishing line. I've got no idea what it's made from. I can tell you it might look like dental floss, but it's not dental floss. It is exceptionally tough. This stuff I got years ago, one of my neighbours was throwing it out in disgust. He'd uh, managed to tangle up his line and he had this huge ball of the stuff there. And he was just throwing it out and I spotted it. And I knew that would be exactly the sort of thing I could use. So I've got to get my cord down through that hole there. Where's my piece of magic wire? Oops, and keep dropping it. This is just a hook I've got made here from a piece of wire. I can use it to pull that cord down through the body. I can just get it hooked on there. That's one side. It's the other side. That 
that one goes to the inside, this one goes to the outside. Let's pull those down taut and see what I've got. Make sure my cord is sitting neatly over the drum. Well, it's not really at the moment. Let's get that tucked down. I don't want any uh, knots or overlaps on that cord. I want that to make sure it's running exactly where I expect it to run. And with no crossovers. Alright, that looks okay. Now I'll need to put my washers and screw in here to hold that cord so that it stays where it's put while I'm fitting it to the drum at the bottom. Just get these washers and the screw sitting there in place. I'll route my cord round there, trap it under the washers. I'll take the one from the back and I'll put it on that side towards the end of the camera. And just nip those screws up very lightly. That screw I should say. To hold the cord in place. Now I'm having one last look at the cord run at the top here comparing it to the manual. I've got the uh, service manual for the Retina 3S. It's exactly the same process for the Retina 3S. I know it goes round there, round the bottom and to the front. And from the front it goes to the bottom at this end. Okay, so that's alright. Let's unhook that spring. Get those cords over those two pulleys. And I've got my pulley here to go on the bottom. So the front goes to the bottom. Spool that up a bit. And the back goes to the top. I think I want one more turn on there. I'm pretty sure I've got that right. I've got to get my cord. They're running on the same pulley at the moment, which is obviously not right. Let's see if I can get that one there on the right pulley. That looks okay. I'll remove this screw. in those washers check the run of my cord make sure everything is parallel that all looks good and if I roll the drum it's checking the movement of this it's not fixed to the drum here at the moment it's only wrapped around the drum now, there's a problem at the bottom that cord's not 
running around the pulley here at the bottom properly. This is all looking a bit, a bit sus at the moment. Something has come unhinged. I'm going to start again. Well, I've got that cord in. It's all looking good. Um, more of a struggle than I expected it to be, but that'll do nicely. So all I've got to do now is reverse the process of taking the front off the camera, go back through the tedious business of setting my film plane to uh, lens mount distance, and um, check everything, make sure everything's still working nicely. set my meter because of course at the moment the drum is not coupled the cord runs around the drum but it's not locked into the drum the drum on the meter has a little two tiny notches at the back and basically you hook the cord in under there this is the meter we took out of the camera the one that's a bit tired this is the meter that I hope will do the job for me it'll be lively so I want my bracket here that holds the spring for the uh, main cat, the drive cam at the front of the camera. I need to put that back because of course that's been removed because we didn't need it anymore. And then I can go through the tedious business of um, fitting the transfer shaft, winding up the spring on this. It occurs to me it's uh, ridiculously overdue for me to make a special tool to coil that spring up rather than fight with pairs of tweezers each time and I can foresee some stage in the next month or two I'll actually get around to doing that better late than never. Ten minutes later it's back together everything's coupled up the meter looks quite good of course now I've got to lock the cord into the meter drum which is always a bit fraught, but there's not much danger I'll break that meter cord this time because I've got that uh, fairly indestructible fishing line stuff in there this time not the aged silk cord that once upon a time was there there was nothing wrong with that either, it's just uh, probably not as flash as it was 60 years ago Right, so I've checked my meter. I'm pretty confident that that's reading quite correctly at that point. I've got to get my cord into the notch in the drum here. So first thing I want to do is mark the position of my cord in the drum so that as I rotate it, to expose the notch I can check to make sure that the cord hasn't shifted on the drum and uh, effectively change my adjustment. So that's the first task. <laughs> 